Hi, welcome back to Learning English and Literature. In this video, I will discuss the poem Disney Poplars by G.M. Hopkins. Okay, uh, Disney Poplars is uh, it's a tree, it's a plant, and for the fact that G.M. Hopkins is focusing on plants or trees, uh, this is the romantic side of G.M. Hopkins. Okay, this poem is about how man destroys nature. Uh, we fell trees for wood, for uh, furniture, and for other industrial uh, means. We kill the forests without even um, making plants to uh, to replant, okay? So when we fell trees, we should also, when we cut down trees, we should also plant, learn to plant trees so that the forest can keep on living. Not just um, felling of trees, also you notice poachers uh, killing some wild animals um, to sell. I mean, the ivory, uh, the tusks, is very expensive in the black market. Uh, you can see these pictures where uh, hunters or poachers that kill these animals not for food but just to sell uh, their parts. Okay, in the black market. This is what this poem is all about: how man destroys nature, and this is how nature fights back. If you remember, in 2022, there was this flood that almost uh, swept away. Uh, the Niger Delta region uh, of Nigeria and some north central states like Kogi. So this is uh, nature fighting back. Okay, let's begin with the poem. My Aspen's deer, whose airy cages quelled, quelled or quaint in leaves the leaping sun. Now, he refers to the trees, the plants, my dear, that it shows that there's a connection between the poet and the trees. Okay, so the branch is held back or dampened the beams of sunlight in their leaves. You see, when the sun is hot, these trees can block the rays, and whatever light that escapes will become mild on your skin. Uh, I hope you get the picture. When the sun is hot, but you're sitting under a tree, you are being protected by the tree. Okay, so the, the beams of uh, of the sun of sunlight that you feel under the tree will be warm. But if you remove the trees, you will feel the intensity of the beams of sunlight. All failed, failed, and all failed. The trees are cut down. His dearest Aspen's trees were cut down. And look at the repetition. Failed, failed, are all failed. They were all cut down and there was no plan to replant them. So this, uh, the, the reason, uh, well, one of the reasons the poet uses the word failed is to show the nature of destruction. Man is destroying the forests. Man is destroying the forest with reckless abandon, okay? Um, that's what the poet is trying to say. Like, uh, this is like a massacre, a genocide. That's what uh, the poet is trying to explain in this line here. Of a fresh and following folded rank not spared, not out of a long lively, even road trees, not a single one has survived. Look at the words here. Yeah? failed, they killed them, they massacred them. They did not let one single tree to survive. Not one that dandled and a sandaled shadow. Not a one of any trees which once created my sandal wearing summertime shadow. Not one tree survived, the tree that provided me shade against the sun. That swam or sank on meadow and river and wind wandering weed winding bank. Now, that's a very good use of alliteration here. As I swam or lay at ease in the middle in the river, 
and along the breezy with the river bank. Now, he recalls what that place was like before the trees were felled, okay? It was a nice environment, okay, by the brook, by the river, you know, could relax there, but now the trees are cut down. Oh, if we but knew what we do, what we delve or hew, or if we only knew what we are doing when we cut these trees down. This shows that man does not have emotions when it comes to uh, plants, okay? When it comes to uh, botanical uh, living things. Let me put it that way. They just cut them down, believing that they will grow back. Hack and rack the green green. See, going back to the previous line, he used the word, uh, he uses the word failed repeatedly. Now he's using the word hack. Hack is a violent way of chopping something down. Okay, when you read on the newspaper that uh, when you say uh, the robbers chopped, he was hacked to death. Okay. It shows it was violently chopped to death. Now, that's the same thing man is doing to the trees. Violently hack the growing grain. Since country is so tender to touch, have been so slender, for the countryside is as fragile and delicate. If you cut down these trees, this countryside will just become bare like a desert. That, like this slick and seen ball, but a prick will make no eye at all. As an eyeball, just as a mere poke can blind an eye forever, so the felling of the trees will make the land bare like deserts. Where we, even where we mean to mend her, we end her. Even our best intention changes. You see, sometimes when we want to cut down a few trees, uh, for our industry use, yes, even though we have good intentions, we just want to cut down a few trees so that we can build some uh, furniture, we end up killing the forest, okay? So we end up spoiling the landscape. What the poet is just saying, let these trees grow naturally. Don't just hack and kill them as if their lives do not matter. When we hew or delve, whenever we cut things down or dig things up, it simply means whenever we destroy nature. After commas cannot guess the beauty being. Now, what he's saying is that the picture you're looking, you're looking at here is what was before. Okay? So if you cut down these trees, those people who did not who were not alive or who were not around to see this beautiful place, they will not know how beautiful the place was before it was destroyed. That's what um, the poet is trying to say here. That the, the, uh, the Aspens, they were his home. That was his home. That was where he used to just stay while away time play. But now the trees are being chopped down. He cannot even, he doesn't even have a home there anymore. His home has been destroyed. 10 or 12, only 10 or 12 strokes of hard work on self. You see, to bring down these trees, what you just need is just easy blows with, the, with an ax. It shows how easy it is to destroy, but very difficult to rebuild. It takes some minutes to fell a tree, but it takes years to grow that tree. Rural scene, a rural scene, Sweet, a special rural scene. Oh, my countryside, my beloved, most special countryside. He misses his countryside. In two he, sorry, that was um, that this the, the question here was uh, it's a question for my students. Okay, in two paragraphs, discuss the tone of the poet. Clearly, the tone, uh, the poet here is angry, is sorrowful. Okay, he uses a very painful tone. He's not happy with the actions of man. And the mood on the reader is uh, the reader feels pity for the trees because the trees are defenseless. They cannot defend themselves against uh, the actions of man. Thank you very much.